Um, we will go ahead and get started right away. Um, we'll go with the first question from Joe Chats from ONTAP Sportsnet. Hey, Ezra. I hope all is well in the two hours since you said hi to me earlier. Uh, <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, in that time, we've had, in addition to the club, I'm curious about your initial uh, feelings about Alonzo Aceves and what he can bring to the club going forward. Well, he's another young, um, talented player um, that we've, we've been able to bring into the, 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 the squad. Um, our scouts did a really good job of, of going out and, and searching and making sure, you know, we made the right choice with our um, last uh, 22 initiative player. So um, he fits that and we're happy to have him. You know, he's going to be a very good addition to the team. He's in training already. So that's good. Thank you. Next, we will go to Brian Sandalo from the Chicago Sun-Times. Uh, thank you, E. Uh, glad it sounds like you're feeling a little better. And uh, thank you, Ezra, for making some time for us this afternoon. Uh, nice to talk to you again. Hope all is well. Um, just uh, to switch gears a little bit, uh, the news about the training facility. Uh, what's your reaction to uh, that uh, project now seemingly like it's finalized? And um, just what does that mean for the club to have that coming on the not too, in the not too distant future? Well, I think um, giving back to our community has been the core of our, um, you know, club mission. Uh, and this is just another way of us to be impactful in that in that situation. We'll have a, a world class sporting facility, um, uh, and we'll be able to help uh, the people in that community. I think it's going to be very impactful, and I think it just goes to show um, how embedded um, the club is. Uh, our owner, starting with Joe. Mansueto just wanted to be a part of this community and uh, enhance the lives of, of the people in our community. Thank you. Next, we'll go with John Rojas. Thank you, um, Ezra. Thanks for the time. I just want your impressions on uh, Alonso Seves, what he can bring to the team. When do you expect him to be on market and, and ready to? Uh, contribute for the team? Well, he's in market. Um, he's training with us right now. Um, so he's available. Um, he's just uh, another player that, you know, he adds uh, competition uh, uh, to a squad that we're, we're trying to make as deep as possible because we know with the grueling MLS season how uh, having depth uh, is important. Uh, he's going to compete for a starting position. Uh, and, and he's just another player that, you know, at his age, that we see a lot of potential, a lot of talent. Uh, he's played, even at his young age, in some big games. So uh, he's going to bring that to the squad, and he's going to make us even uh, better, uh, at least defensively, for sure. Uh, he's good 1v1 defender, and he's good on the ball, too. So getting forward is something that uh, we're going to be looking forward to getting from him, that ability to get into our attack. Thank you. Next, we'll go with Hernán Espinosa from La Fiera Deportiva. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. I'm oh, sorry. Yes, uh, Ezra, uh, my question is about this game this Saturday. Uh, probably have a lot of uh, men down for this Saturday. How are you planning to come up with uh, the, the players? I know you have, you say you have multiple positions available now and uh, please tell me something about the, you know the the men that you will be counting for this Saturday. Yeah well we've done a good job in the offseason to you know make the team deeper but you know injuries are something that you just can't you know get by sometimes um, and so with the two injuries that happened in week one and then getting the two red cards uh, on Saturday it it's depleted us a little bit but um, due to the fact that we've, you know, made the team stronger, um, it's not as devastating as it would have been, let's say, like last, last July or last, last um, August uh, when we lost multiple players and then we just didn't have the wherewithal to finish out the season as strongly as we were in the beginning or in the middle of the season. So we, you know, we don't like it. <laughs> we wish we were at full tilt because these are very important games. You know, it's going to be the third of three really, really big games. Uh, uh, we've, we've lost one, we've tied one, and 
and hopefully you know, this weekend we win this one. But you know, playing against New York, Philly, and now Cincy, uh, it really sets the stage, and it really because you're coming up against you know who most people feel are, are the top teams in the conference. You know, so it's it's a good test for us, another good test. But we're at home, so we're expected to win these games when we're at home, and that's what we're going to go out and do on Saturday. Thank you. Next, we'll go back to Brian Sandalo. Uh, yeah, Ezra, I'm um, just uh, wondering uh, on Saturday, what did you think of uh, Chris Brady's performance? Uh, obviously, there were some ups and downs. And then continuing on that point, uh, last year you guys went through the growing pains with a young, talented goalie, and now it looks like you're poised to maybe have to do that again. Uh, how prepared are you to go through those again this year? And just how confident are you in Chris that he can get past some of those bumps? Well, first of all, I think Chris has been performing really well um, through the preseason. Um, in the first couple of games, I thought he's done well also. Um, I'm sure he would like to have that uh, goal back from Philly. But, you know, that's something that, you know, young players go through those growing pains. Just unfortunately, when you're a keeper, that's that gets a little highlighted. It's a little exaggerated because that's what people see. But I thought up until then, in that game, he was playing well. He made a couple of big saves for us. So... Um, you know, it's, yes, it's growing pains, but I think we're confident in him and his, his abilities. And um, now, obviously, we've got we to gotta win some games, so we can't be, you know, making too many mistakes, especially in that position. But I think uh, for, for now, he, he's, he's in a good space, um, and he'll re rebound really well from that. If you remember last year when, when Gaga was going through his two or three game um, where he had some, you know, some downs, um, he was able to, you know, to work his way out of that. So um, hopefully, you know, Chris keeps that type of mentality. Uh, he's a he's a very strong uh, minded kid. So we expect uh, a similar um, outlook and a similar recovery uh, as we saw in Gaga last year. What did you learn from that experience going through that with Gaga that you might be able to apply to Chris this season? I know they're not the same pe the same person, but there are some similarities. Um, so what can you apply from that experience to Chris um, if, if that does happen to him this season? Well, as a coach, the key is, is reading the player, you know, because every player is going to handle a devastating uh, situation differently. Um, but from reading Chris and from, from being around him, I think he, he's a very strong uh, mentally. Uh, so I think he'll be fine. I think he will get through this um, and he, he'll be better for it. Um, uh, on Saturday. So uh, I'm not worried about um, him going out and, you know, being in a shell or being nervous or anything like that. Now, if, if that happens to be the case, then uh, we, we'll, we'll make, you know, uh, the necessary uh, moves that we need to. But uh, as for now, um, I think the kid is going to be fine. I think he's going to come out and, and make some big saves for us when, when called upon. We don't really ask of, uh, of our keepers to make big saves because, you know, we're very organized defensively. So, um, but when that opportunity does present itself, I think he'll be he'll be up for the, for the task on Saturday. Thank you. We'll go back to John Rojas. I see your hand is up. Thank you. I actually have two more. Um, Ezra, first off is what, I know it's only two games, but in general, what is missing? You know, it looks like it's, it's another rebirth, another reconstruction of, the, of the, at least of the roster. The ideas are there, the model of play is there. But what are you seeing that is missing right now? Uh, I mean, I've been saying this from preseason, and it was a factor last year. We just have to finish. Um, we just have to finish our chances. We create enough chances, especially early in games, that if we take those chances, it makes the game a lot easier for us. Um, let's take the first game. You know, we get we defend really, really well in the press. We get Casper played in, and we don't take that. And, and now they come and score at our place and we have to fight to crawl back into the game to tie it up. You know, we end up getting a second goal, which got called offside. Uh, but I think had we taken that that goal, uh, which, you know, it's a 90%, uh, you have to make that 95 maybe, some would say. Um, we go to Philly, you know, it's a very tough place to play. Uh, every time you get a chance, opportunity, you got to take it because uh, I think they've won now 10, 11 games in a row at home. You know, it's, it's a very hard, uh, place to play, but we came in with a really good game plan. We switched to the two forwards. 
to help for the lack of uh, midfield presence that we had losing um, Fetty and Hyra the, the, the week before. And we started off really, really well with a good mentality. We get the ball forward. We get the free kick. We have five, six guys, you know, six feet, two inches or higher. Uh, so we knew that, you know, set pieces could be a big part of the game. And, you know, we get one in the first 30 seconds uh, that we should have taken, you know, but we end up, we missed that. Played a really uh, steady first half with them. You know, I thought it was an evenly played uh, match, not so much on the referee, end, but I'm not going to go into that. But um, still, it's 0-0 at half, and we come out, take that red card in the, in the first five minutes, and it becomes difficult from there. You know, now we have to play 40-plus uh, minutes uh, a man down. We gave it the best we can, you know, but you can only hold up for so long. And unfortunately, the, we gave up that goal in the 89, 90th minute, and uh, it's, it's really hard with six minutes at a time to kind of get back into the game, but we were still pushing, trying to, to get it. But my point is, had we taken that goal in the first 30 seconds of that game, um, and we have some other a couple opportunities we had, you know, Blake made a couple of good saves. Uh, I remember one on, on Casper's header at the back post. Had we take, you know, that first goal in the first 30 seconds, that's a change game. Now they have to come, they have to open up themselves and give us uh, even more chance to, to create chances. So finishing, man, finishing. It's, it, it's what's it's lacking right now. Uh, we work on it. It's not like we don't work on it um, because while we're, 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 we're trying to keep our defensive shape, we want to add, you know, some dimensions on our finishing. And we're getting players in uh, that's going to continue to challenge and make the team better and, and, and hold guys more accountable. Uh, but um, right now, it's, it's our Achilles heel. Um, we don't give up many goals. We're not going to give up many goals. Um, but we got to get goals on the other end. You know, uh, one goal in two games, it's, it's, it's not a good start for us. Uh, uh, Considering what what it is that we're trying to accomplish this year, we need to uh, to take our chances. If we weren't getting chances, um, then it's a different topic. But we're getting the chances, and we're getting good chances too. We just got to be more clinical, more efficient, more effective when we do present ourselves with those opportunities. And it's not just one person; it's whoever is that in that position. You know, being composed, being confident, and just just sticking it away. Th th thanks for that, um, Ezra. And the, the last one for me, um, how many players are you losing during the international break? Um, as far as I know, maybe Gaston is going to be called up. Yeah, I'm not quite sure as yet. Um, there are a couple guys that's been called in, but I'm not sure who's going to be be going. Um, hopefully not too many because we're already depleted with, uh, with, injury, with a couple of injuries. Thank you don't you. have a number, though. No, 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 I don't have no. that exact number. No, no, sorry. Okay, okay. That's all right. Thanks. Thank you. We will go last question to Mr. Brian Sandalo. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Elizabeth Sanchez. And uh, injuries, uh, that was, that's, that's my question. Um, just uh, what's the prognosis currently for uh, Jairo and uh, uh, Fetty? And also, how's uh, Shakiri doing right now? Yeah, so Shakiri has some tightness uh, in his leg, his lower leg. Um, so we, we've been really careful with that. Um, hopefully he's uh, in for, for, for Saturday. I expect him to be. Um, Hyro and Freddy, different situation. They're probably a couple weeks still out. Um, hopefully after the Miami game, we'll have these guys back. Um, if for some miracle we get them back by next week, but uh, they'll be out again for this weekend. Are there uh, any other uh, injury concerns? No, a couple of nicks and knocks there, but nothing. Um, that we should be, be worried about. Uh, and hopefully in the next couple of days, nothing happens uh, as I knock on wood. But uh, uh, beyond those two, that's for sure out um, this weekend. Uh, no one is, uh, else is out uh, at this point. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Coach, for taking the time today. We really Thanks, appreciate guys. it. And everyone else on the call, thank you so much. Uh, we will be up shortly with Gaston Jimenez.
us as a reminder, please use the raised hand icon if you have a question and we can call on you. And we'll go ahead and get started with Jose Gudiño. ¿Qué tal, Gastón? Gracias por hacer el tiempo para nosotros. Eh, Gastón, ¿cuál, cómo, ¿cómo se encuentra el grupo? El hecho de, pues prácticamente en las primeras dos jornadas se podría decir que no han tenido, eh, no se han podido eh, demostrar lo que es al 100% en cuestiones de, de ausencia. ¿no? La primera jornada sabemos las lesiones, esta segunda jornada las expulsiones. ¿no? Eh, ¿Cuál es el sentimiento de... Eh, de, 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 de poder demostrar en la cancha, pero a la vez, eh, pues con las ausencias, ¿no? Buenas tardes, José. Eh, sí, la verdad que es difícil cuando no tenés a, eh, un plantel 100% disponible. Eh, a pesar de eso, pienso que el primer partido eh, hemos mostrado cosas, buenas cosas de lo que practicamos, de lo que queremos para nuestro juego, eh, sobre todo cuando teníamos el resultado en contra, eh, demostramos carácter de, de ir a buscarlo, de, de proponer y, y de, de buscarle la vuelta para, para ganar el partido. Eh, y en cuanto al segundo partido, eh, siento que hemos hecho un buen primer tiempo, habíamos peleado hasta el final, eh, fue muy difícil jugar con uno menos eh, el segundo tiempo. Eh, pero creemos que, que estamos eh, en buen camino Recién empieza, mando fecha eh, Es un torneo muy largo Así que eh, vamos a ir encontrando eh, Y mejorando nuestro juego eh, esa, es la, esa es la idea Así que ojalá que este partido sea el primer triunfo eh, Del campeonato y en casa How uh, is the atmosphere within the group? How do you feel after not really being able to demonstrate uh, and be at 100% during these first two games? First, because of the injuries and then because of um, some ejections. Um, How is the group doing? How is the group feeling? The truth is that it's difficult um, when you don't have the squad at 100% and not everyone's 100% available. But despite that, I think that in the first two games, we, we demonstrated some very good things, some things that we've been working on. Um, in the first game, when we were down during the game, we really went out and fought really hard, looked for the result. We showed really good character, and we went out and we proposed our game and were looking for the, the comeback. And I think we did a really good job with that. And in the second game, we played a very good first half. Um, the It was very difficult. It's always difficult when you play a man down, but we really showed what we've been working on. We really showed what we've been, been improving on and we fought hard until the very end. So I think that we're on the right path. I think that we're um, barely starting off. This season is barely starting. So we're going to continue to find our game and to improve on our game. And hopefully you'll be able to see that in this coming weekend. We'll hopefully be the first win and at home. Next up, Mr. Brian Sandalo. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon, Gaston. Hope all is well. Um, just wondering, what's the reaction in the dressing room to the news of the practice facility uh, looking like now it's, uh, it's a real thing and that it's coming in the next couple of years? Gracias por tomar el tiempo de estar con nosotros hoy. ¿Cuál es la reacción en el vestidor acerca del de anuncio del nuevo centro de rendimiento que parece que ahora sí se va a venir dentro de un, pocos años? Sí, bueno, la reacción obviamente es, es muy buena. Fe, estamos felices por, por la noticia. Eh, es un proyecto hermoso que, que va a crear el club y... Eh, yo al menos hablo personalmente de que eh, queremos y necesitamos un lugar maravilloso para el club, para, para todos los que queremos al Chicago Fire, que bueno, eh, es algo muy lindo y ojalá que, 
que sea pronto, sé que no lo va a hacer, pero ojalá que sea pronto y, y, y nada, eh, estuve viendo un poco todo el proyecto y ese, la verdad que es hermoso. Yeah, the reaction in the locker room is happiness. It's great. Um, everyone's really happy with the news. It really looks like a wonderful project um, on a personal level. I, I'm really happy about it because obviously we want and we need a training facility, a performance center like that um, for everyone who loves the club. And it's a great project on behalf of the club. So it's really wonderful. I was looking at it and it looks it looks great. So hopefully it's something that'll happen soon. I know it won't be too soon, but um, hopefully it happens soon and it really is wonderful. Yeah. Just uh, to follow up on that, just what kind of advantage would that be for the club to have something that nice and, and that modern and state of the art? Hablando de eso mismo, ¿qué tipo de ventaja crearía para el club tener algo, tener algo así uh, tan moderno y a la vanguardia. Bueno, ventajas eh, de sentirte en casa, de sentir lo propio como, como sí, sentirlo como propio. <coughs> eh, creo que la gente que, que está hace tiempo acá, tener algo así, eh, llegar a ese lugar en, en el momento que esté, eh, se va a sentir orgulloso, se va a sentir feliz de... De, de tener lo que tienen y eh, eh, imagino que que uno cuando llega a su casa eh, y encuentra algo tan, tan lindo es eh, se siente feliz así que creo que eh, empezamos por ahí por esa ventaja de, de ser felices cuando uno llega a casa con un nuevo proyecto y eh, obviamente eh, todos los beneficios de, de, que uno puede tener como, como club eh, es algo espectacular porque según el proyecto eh, es algo que está eh, va a ser top. Eh, entonces, bueno, en el momento que llegue lo disfrutaremos y bueno, eh, a, a cuidarlo, ¿no? It'll be the advantage of feeling at home, feeling that is something that's your own and that you belong there. I think that um, when someone comes home, uh, you you really feel happy to have something like that. Um, and I think that the people who have been here for a while, to have something like that is really going to be fantastic because you're going to be able to feel really proud of the project and to have something so wonderful and so nice um because when you go out and when you come home and to see something that nice you really feel uh, happiness and that'll be really the main advantage for us and i think that as far as all the benefits as a club to have something so spectacular um is going to be amazing because as i understand it the project is really something that is oh, there's a lot being put into it and it's going to be really top so when you when it arrives at the moment that it's here, we're gonna really um, take advantage of it and enjoy it and take care of it as well. Gracias. Ahora seguimos con Jan Rojas. Gracias, Tonga. Gracias por el tiempo. Está lindo el saquito, eh. Este, <laughs> te, te, te tengo dos. Um, Llevas, llevas ya un rato con el Chicago Fire y desde afuera pareciera que todos los años el equipo está en reconstrucción. ¿Qué tanto afecta eso? ¿Cómo lo ves desde adentro? Si sí si, si lo ves igual. Eh, bueno. Eh, buena pregunta. Creo que eh, este año especialmente creo que el, eh, mantuvimos la base porque si ves no, no se han ido mucho, se han ido muy poquito eh, y se ha mantenido la base, han venido jugadores que, que vinieron a, a sumar y mucho, eh, 
así que no, no veo muchos cambios este año a comparación del año pasado eh, y ojalá que bueno con la base que tenemos más los chicos que llegaron podemos hacer algo, algo lindo este año eh, es la idea, es el objetivo eh, y no, no los quiero comparar con un años anteriores pero <coughs> eh, sí del año pasado a este creo que se mantuvo mucho la base y, y se, se agregaron chicos nuevos que, que bueno, tienen mucha calidad que suman mucho en el grupo en el vestuario Así que, bueno, ojalá que, que sea un gran año para el Fire, que hace tiempo no lo es, así que ese es el objetivo de todos y estamos haciendo lo posible para, para cumplir eso. You've been with the Fire a few years now and it feels like every year is somewhat of a restructuring year. How do you see it from the inside? Do you feel the same way about that? That's a good question. Um, I think this year specifically, we kept our base. Um, if you look at it, few people left, more people came, and we were able to keep our base, and the, the players who came came to really add and add a lot to the team. So I think that with this base, And with the players who came, we're really going to be able to do a lot of good things this year and hopefully um, to reach our objectives that we have set for ourselves. So I don't really want to compare it to previous years, but I do think that this year with the base that we have and with all the players who came in and really joined the team and, and felt like they were right at home right away, um, these players, they came in, they came to add to the team both on the field and in the locker room. So I think that this year is going to be a really good year for the fire. Um, I know you haven't seen it in the past several years, but I think that it'll be a good year to reach our goals and we're going to do everything we can to get to that point and reach our objectives. Y, Matt, y la otra, la última. Oh, ¿Puedo, okay. Elisa? Sí. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Gracias. Um, la otra, Tonga, tengo entendido que estabas eh, reservado por selección. Estás finalmente, vas a viajar y de todas maneras, ¿qué significa que, por ejemplo, Cuba, eh, Oviedo, eh, vos si terminas yendo, es, es algo que tiene que ver más con que Guillermo esté ahí o con la liga en sí y el hecho de que ustedes le dan cada vez más nombre a la liga en, en Paraguay? Perdón, no entendí la pregunta. Pues la, lo, lo primero es que tengo entendido que está reservado para viajar con selección. No sé si se concretó y cuándo viajas. Y lo otro es si el hecho de que, de que Cubas, vos, eh, Oviedo estén llamados tiene más que ver con que Guillermo esté ahí o con que la liga está creciendo y le de, ustedes le den nombre a la liga en Paraguay. Bueno, yo creo que es un poco de todo, pero a ver, está claro que la liga está creciendo y mucho. Eso es clarísimo. Eh, cada vez vienen más jugadores talentosos a la liga, eh, cada vez jugadores más jóvenes. Eh, y la verdad que el salto de calidad es, es grande. Así que, bueno, no, no tengo mucho para decir sobre eso porque está claro que, que, que ha crecido mucho y va a seguir creciendo claramente. Eh, así que, bueno, acá hay varios paraguayos, así que eh, Guillermo seguramente ve mucho la liga. Eh, conoce la liga, así que bueno, eh, veremos, veremos qué pasa más adelante. ¿Y vos viajas después del fin de semana, verdad? No sé, no, no me han dicho nada a mí todavía. Va, ok. <ríe> We heard that you were being uh, called up or were on the. Um, preliminary roster for the national team is that true and if so when do you travel and on that same note players like Cubas, Oviedo and yourself um, being called up to the national team do you think that it's because Guillermo is at the helm of the team or do you think it's because the league is growing I think it's a little bit of everything um, it's very very clear that the league is growing um, I think that you see it uh, very clearly and each time each year it's growing more. You see more players coming. You see talented players. You see younger players coming to this league. So I don't really have to say too much about that because it's very obvious that the league is growing. And um, I know there are many 
Paraguayan players around and Guillermo knows the league. He knows the players. Surely he's watching. So that's just a given that it's it's growing. And as far as going with the national team, nothing has been said at this time. Ahora vamos con Hernán Espinosa. Gastón, muy buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, Hernán. Uh, Gastón, escuchaba al entrenador Ezra Edison al terminar el partido de sábado que estaba tú eh, puesto a entrar solamente 60 minutos. Y como te eh, vimos el año pasado, los últimos tres meses, con las muletas y cuidando de tu operación, ¿qué tan adaptado has podido a entrar a jugar estos partidos, si es más mentalmente o físicamente, eh, en el proceso de tu recuperación? Gracias. Bueno, es algo eh, claramente físico, eh, cuesta mucho volver a agarrar ritmo después de tanto tiempo estar parado, tanto como eh, por la cirugía, como por vacaciones, eh, y la verdad que, que sí, cuesta, cuesta bastante, pero he hecho una buena pretemporada, una buena recuperación también, eh, queremos ir de a poco, eh, para no exigirlo todavía al máximo, eh, así que bueno, eso, eso es lo que estamos haciendo, estamos llevándolo muy de a poco, eh, me voy sintiendo cada vez mejor, me falta todavía, pero la verdad que me, que me voy sintiendo que puedo competir y, y nada, darle lo mejor a, al equipo claramente. We heard Coach mention earlier about you playing only 60 minutes in the you know last game in the last couple of games. And after seeing you last season finish out the last few months with crutches, talk to us a little bit about your adaptation and your adjustment. Is it something that's more physical or something that's more mental? Um, well, this is something that's clearly physical. It's uh, hard to come back after such a long time, it's hard to find your rhythm after being out, but first with the surgery and then after that with vacation and the off season. But I've been working hard and I think I did a good preseason and I've had a good recovery so far. And I feel like we're wanting to bring me back in little by little so that um, we don't overexert it and we can bring me back slowly. And I think I'm feeling well. I feel a little bit better each time. I, I still... I'm still lacking just a little bit, but I feel like I'm getting better and I'm going to be able to really compete and give the best of myself for this team. Okay, vamos, última pregunta, John Rojas. No, Elizabeth, I'm good. Sorry, disculpa, Gastón, solo no baje la mano. Oh, okay, bueno, muchísimas gracias. Gracias, Gastón, gracias no. a todos. Thank gracias. you all for joining us. Que tengan buena tarde.